Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I just really wanted to test out some new affordable makeup that I've had sitting literally in this basket for like almost a month. Because I love like just stopping by like CVS or Target or just looking at the new makeup, and I was really excited to try some of this stuff, and I knew that I wanted to try it on camera. So I do have a few things in here, not exactly a full face, so I'll be filling in some gaps with products from my collection. But before we jump into this more chatty, get ready with me style video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these. And if you haven't and you'd like to, hope you would consider subscribing and the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. So I don't have a new primer, so I'm just going to use the primer from my current project pan. This is the Burberry Fresh Glow Luminous Dewy Fluid Base. I always add extra words in there that aren't in the title. I don't know. Maybe it would have sounded better. <laughs> so I'm actually working from home today, which means that uh, even though I could sleep in a little bit longer, I tend to wake up around the same time every day, between like 4 and 5, so... And on a normal day, that gives me enough time to get up, shower, get ready, film a video, do a little bit of work on the channel, and then go to catch the train. But since my commute today is exactly zero minutes, <laughs> I have a little bit more time to just kind of sit down and enjoy the process of getting ready, which I love. I just love spending, I don't know, it feels like it's my me time in the morning. Like. The house is quiet, no one else is really up, it's just me, it's my vanity, it's all of my makeup. Uh, normally if I'm not filming anything, I'll have like YouTube videos of get ready with me's or whatever I have on my watch list playing and it's just like my happy time. <laughs> okay, so now that primer is done, I do have a new foundation that I've had forever and have not tried yet. It's not new new, but it's new to me. It's the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. I bought this like months ago and was hoping to do a whole video on it and then I literally put it in a bag and forgot about it. Yeah. So I have the shade Medium Olive and I have no idea how that's gonna work. So let's see. I also don't know how I'm supposed to apply this. Okay, I've got two brushes here. I have one from Sigma, this is the F80, and then I have one from Morphe, this is the M439. I like the Sigma one better just because it's flat and the bristles are a lot more comfortable than the Morphe one, but it, it still works. I tend to reach for this one if this one's dirty. Let's put it that way. So let's first check out the shade. Ooh, we're gonna be a little dark today. Well, you know, let's go for it. Since I'm working from home, the only time I'm actually going to, like, see people is through Google Hangouts. That's where we do all of our meetings on. And makeup doesn't really show up there that much, so let's just go for it. So I'm just going to apply this or try to apply it the same way I do my uh, favorite foundation recently, the Catrice one. So I just do it like this. I'm going to see how it blends out with a brush. I know this isn't how you're supposed to apply it. You're supposed to do like one drop for light covers and two drops for, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I think I put too much on, so I'm like spreading it around. Definitely gonna have to smooth this out because I am seeing a lot of like brush strokes that I can't get out with the brush. Okay, shade is way off, like, don't know if I'd walk outside with just this on, but once I smooth it out with the sponge, I do lose coverage. So it looks like a really low medium coverage right now, so I'm going to finish up just right here, because that's the only spot that doesn't have any foundation on it yet, and then I'm going to see if I can build it up down here where I have some breakouts. And where else do I want to build it up? Let's try building it up a little bit over here. Let me try building it up with the brush and see how that goes. Okay. 
yeah i would definitely recommend if you're gonna try build it up use a sponge for that second layer by itself because i feel like the brush just kind of moved things around and didn't really let it sit i can definitely see it oxidizing like it already like now you can see it on camera like that full line as to where it is so I would recommend going like a shade lighter than you need. I actually went into a NYX store and I got shade match to this shade. It wasn't that long ago. I haven't, I've been kind of steady on the same shade for the past couple months. Yeah. So I don't know about the shade, but it does look like a really nice finish. It's not as full coverage as I would like, but it's a nice solid like medium coverage. Okay, so for concealer today, I have two concealers from Catrice because I, since I love their foundation so much, I wanted to go out and like try some more of their base products. So this is the Liquid Camouflage Concealer, and I bought two shades. I have Light Beige and 15 Honey. So Honey, I guess, is lighter than the Light Beige. So I think I'm actually going to go in with Honey and see how this looks under my eyes supposed to be a full coverage waterproof sweatproof concealer so hmm. looks a little dark let me see what light beige looks like Yeah, I'd probably go with light beige. I, 15 looks darker than 20. So, you know, we'll mix them for today just so that they'll look even on both sides. But I, from now on, if I were to keep using this, I'd probably just go with number 20. That looks stunning. That actually looks really nice. Get out of here. But a true, the true test of a concealer is how it reacts to powder and how it lasts throughout the day. But first putting it on looks really nice. For setting under my eyes, I have some new powders from Essence. Now I have no idea what happened with the collab between Casey Holmes and Essence. I had picked up both of the face palettes. So there's one called Peachy Bean and Jelly Keen. I have no idea what those mean but one is more like pinky peachy there's like some bronzers and highlights i think and then this one has another peach it's got another blush art over here and some more highlights over here they do still say casey's name on the back and they talk about uh, her channel and everything but i don't see anything on the face powders but in the ulta that i was at these were all in like the same display like with her picture on top of it so i have no idea what happened there i don't know if she's ever actually spoken about it or you know i honestly have no idea so if you know anything further please let me know down below because i'm lost so there's two powders one is in peach and one is in um banana i think the peach is way too dark for me yeah, so I'm gonna go in with the banana powder. Let's see. Oh, ooh, that is messy. So it comes with like the little poof on top and then you take this off to get to the powder and it's just messy. Probably be easier if you just didn't have the poof in there. So let's tap some out. Make sure our concealer is still good. And then It's like super finely milled. And at this point, I can't tell if it's too dark for under my eyes. I'm just gonna let that sit and bake. And while it does, we're gonna set the rest of my face. And baking for me is always a hazard. So it's a hazard for anyone that always wears all black. This is why, fun fact, when I'm actually getting ready for work or getting ready to go anywhere or do anything, the last thing I do before I leave the house is get dressed. I don't know why, I just hate like sitting around being dressed. I'll be in my comfortable clothes, I'll do my makeup, I'll do my hair, I'll do everything, and then won't get dressed until like 10 minutes before, because I don't like, I don't know, I don't like sitting around like waiting, <laughs> all dressed up and everything. I mean all dressed up, like whatever. But that's the last thing that I do. And this is part of the reason, like, because I drop foundation on my clothes, I drop powder, I get, I'm just messy. 
messy messy since i don't have a new face powder i'm gonna go in with one of my favorites the rimmel stay matte powder in shade 004 i'm just set the rest of this okay so now that we're all set i want to jump in to a bronzer slash contour palette that i found also from catrice this is the Prime and Fine Professional Contouring Palette, and I got two shades here. I got 030 and 010. I think so they're supposed to be contouring palettes, but these definitely look warm enough to be a bronzer. If anything, I thought I could use the darker shade as a bronzer, and then the lighter shade, since it does look a bit more ashy, as a contour shade. So. Let's jump in. This is going to be the palette 030. So it comes with like a bronzer type shade over here, which oh, I'm not getting a whole lot off when I swatch that. And then a highlighter over here. So it's just like a matte highlight shade that looks satin in the pan, but when you swatch it, it looks pretty matte. Okay. It does look a little bit patchy to me. Alright, so that as a bronzer shade is really not impressing me. Um, so let me go into the other palette and try using it like I would normally use a contour. I'm going to take my NARS brush and dip. I don't know, like, I'm like rubbing it in and I'm not seeing almost anything come off on the brush. So let's see. Well, I definitely see that more than the other one. Huh. I did have to dig in the pan though. Okay, I really do like the tone of this lighter palette as a contour, but it Definitely, that formula definitely does not work as a bronzer. Like, it looks patchy, it doesn't really blend out that well. Maybe it was really truly meant to only be used in, like, a concentrated area as a contour. So, I'm going to test out the other palette like that, too. Because um, it was really hard just trying to get product onto my bronzing brush. But if it's a contour palette, even if it does look a little bit warmer, maybe it is strictly meant to contour. And I do like that shade. All right, so now that we are bronzed, we are contoured, it's time to jump in to blush. I really want to use this Just Peachy blush right here because I love me a good peach blush. And I think that's like the reason why I was interested in this collection in the first place was that peach blush. The other palette does have a hot pink blush and then a more light shimmery pink or sh peach blush blush the peach blush in this one is completely matte and then right next to it there's more of like a dark berry toned kind of blush right here so i'm just gonna take my blush brush okay so that i can actually see product on the brush Ooh, that's pigmented i'll definitely have to blend that out i like the tone Though it does seem a bit easy to overdo it. So let me take my dual fiber brush and blend this out. So it doesn't blend out the best. So I would just say go in with like a super light hand and build it up as you need to. But that tone is really pretty. I like that tone. So these are, they do have highlighters in both of these palettes and they all look, they look almost identical. Okay, so after like just watching them on my hands real quick, I can tell there's only like a slight difference in two of the highlighters to the point where I wouldn't recommend getting both of these palettes because the highlighters look so similar. The only difference, this is the palette with the more peach blush. This one is a more pinky toned highlight and this is a champagne highlight in the more berry palette. The champagne highlight is almost exactly the same as in the other palette. And then this highlight is more of a light pink, whereas the highlight in the peach one is more of like a peachy pink. So, I mean, the highlighters really aren't different enough to justify getting both of the palettes, really. I should have just picked up the one with the peach blush, because that's really all that I was interested in. But let's give a shot. So I'm going to use the peach palette. I'm going to use that more peachy toned highlight and see. 
how this turns out. Hmm. It's an okay highlight. It's not really emphasizing texture, which is nice, but it's not like blowing my socks off, you know? Let's just do a little here, a little here. I'm just gonna wipe off what little is left of the bake under my eyes. My under eyes do look a little dark. I can't really tell though if it's just in relation to like this foundation or if just that powder it was too dark for under my eyes. And I do see some creasing under my eyes. Again, I also can't tell if that's from the powder or from the concealer. So since I am working really hard on my Pan That palette and I've been using the shades as highlighters, I am just gonna go over each of my cheek highlights since they weren't that crazy. And I'm just gonna put the middle shade from my palette on top just to make it pop. Okay, so I'm also going to use the darkest shade from my Pan That Palette to do my brows real quick. I'll do that off camera just because also my camera is about to die. So we'll come back for brow gel because I did pick up a couple of clear brow gels. All right, guys, we're back and I have brows on. I'm actually really excited about how well I'm doing on my Pan That Palette. I think I'm going to have to do like an emergency like check-in halfway through the month because I've hit pan on all the shades that I have left and I've almost used one up so I think I'm gonna do an update before that one's completely finished but it's just because I've been using it every day for everything that I can use it for and I'm just I'm so excited so okay anyway back to this I have two clear brow gels that I want to try today one is from AOA which is the shop Miss A brand and the other one is actually from ColourPop and I haven't tried out either of these yet. The only one that I did open up was one of the AOA ones. Let me see if I can remember which one it was. This AOA one. We're gonna zoom in on what it looks like because I think either these just are not good or I got a really defective one. So this is supposed to be in true clear, okay? This is what it looks like when you open it. No, that's not a clear brow gel. <laughs> It's all goopy, it's all gunky, and it, it just smells really plasticky. So I can't tell if like mine just went bad, but that's how it looked like when I got it. Because when I got it, I did open just this one and it looked like that. So don't know about that, but I did pick up the shade dark brown in the same brow gel from them. And this one looks like an actual dark brown brow gel. So I think I'm going to use this on this eyebrow and see how it looks. I must have just gotten like a defective one for the clear, which is upsetting because if it was if I could have found a good dollar brow gel, I would have died. Okay, so the shade is actually nice, matches pretty well, but I don't think it's really holding all of my brow hairs into place as well as I would like them to be held. So let me try the color pop one. So this is just the Brow Boss Gel and this is just clear. Ooh, this also has, here, let's zoom in. Okay, so you can see it. So we'll just open this up. It also looks kind of white, right? Is it supposed to look like that? Oh, I don't know, but uh, can't tell if it smells like anything. Okay, let's let's try it. It's definitely lightening the product that I have in my hair. And it's also grabbing my brow product and like pushing it outside the boundary of my brow. But it is holding everything in place. I'm gonna see how both of these dry down. But oh, it's just it's it's been struggling. It's been a bit of a struggle bus trying to find a good, affordable clear brow gel. I'm just going to prime my eyes real quick with the Milani eyeshadow primer since I don't have a new one, and set it with my face powder. So now that we're primed, I really want to go in and try one of these new. I mean, not new anymore. I feel like this came out forever ago. The ColourPop Jelly Much jelly shadows. 
So these are swatches of the two shades that I got. This is the shade Bungalow, it's the green, and then We Jammin' the Champagne. Bungalow is actually a lot more patchy than I was hoping it would be, so I think I'm going to use We Jammin' today. And they actually do dry down really quickly. So what I'm thinking of doing is just taking my contour shade, throwing that in my crease, and then just going all over the lid with the jelly shadow. The texture of these really is like a jelly. It's like the weirdest thing. So I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger and just throw it on my lid. It actually looks really pretty. Good news is it dries really fast. Bad news is it dries really fast. So you have to blend it out quickly. So it turned out like just okay. I mean, I don't know why I would reach for one of these over like a Stila glitter or anything that's a little bit cleaner because these are really messy. I have it all over my hands. They dry fast, so you have to wash it off now. And it just looks, it's not as blinding on my eyes as I thought it would be. Eh, I think I'm going to stick with like this kind of neutral look today, so I don't really want to go into the liner, but before I jump in with mascara, I do want to set my face. So I'm going to go in with the Catrice Illuminating Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Spray, which it took me forever to get my hands on it because it was always sold out. Ah, save this look, please. Dewy Setting Spray. And then I always go in with my normal Extending Spray, the Scandinavia. Okay, let's go ahead and do some mascara. I just threw on the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara. It's really the only mascara from Wet n Wild that I do like. My hair is doing something, I don't know. Now moving on to lip colors. I did order, they're not new new, but I ordered the Casey Holmes collab with uh, Palladio. Is that how you pronounce it? It's like three lipsticks and uh, she's actually how I found out about Rebel Rose because she was raving about Rebel Rose back in the day and I got it and fell in love with it so I knew I had to like pick up her lip collabs because I do love her taste in lipstick but I ordered them from Sally Beauty and I have not gotten them in yet <laughs> so I, I had waited long enough to do this video so I'll let you guys know the next time I do a get ready with me if I do get those lipsticks in and what I do think of them but in the meantime I'm just gonna stick with my favorites the wet n wild uh, liquid cat suit so I'm gonna actually try mixing them for the first time I tried mixing them on my hand and it looked really cute so I'm gonna mix rebel rose with nudie patootie because I mixed it on my hands and it got like this nice dark nude color and it looked really pretty so let's try Ooh, so that does look really cute. I need to do that more. Experiment with like lip colors and try mixing it up and just trying new things. So that is it for this get ready with me trying new affordable products. Keeping it a very simple look at the end but still I enjoy testing out these products. I don't like leaving things at a first impression so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a clip right here later on today. Right now it is just at 7 30 when I finished everything so since i'm working from home i will be able to do a check-in later on through the day so i'll throw that clip in right here of what i think about all these products after a full day of wear hey guys i was hoping to film this in natural light but it is right now 4 37 and the sun's already setting so it's a it's a bit difficult to get there but this is what the full face looks like after a full day it's been just under 10 hours and i gotta say for the most part I'm impressed. I really like how the contour looks, the highlight, the blush is really pretty still. The brow products, the side that had the ColourPop dried down a lot better. I don't like the AOA brow gels, I'm, I'm probably not going to use them again, but the ColourPop side did dry down nicely, not too crunchy, and I like the way that it held everything in place, so I would definitely reach for that again. I'm surprised that the ColourPop jelly shadow did increase. On my hooded eyes at all 
can see there, it does look pretty nice. I was disappointed that the green shade was so patchy, but this one I would definitely reach for again. The foundation I'm a bit disappointed in because like this was like the easiest kind of test I could have put a foundation through. I didn't have to walk to the train station. I didn't have to go through anything. I literally just sat in my house and worked all day with air conditioning, right? And it's already worn off my entire chin area. I look really oily on my nose and I didn't really do anything. I look a little bit oily around my nose as well. And I do see a little bit of creasing right here as well as a little bit on the forehead right up here. So I'm not sure if I would reach for the foundation again just based on that. Also, it's it definitely got darker throughout the day. Do you want to see this? You can see that line right there. Very dark. Let me see. What else was there? Um, the concealer also still looks a bit dark and it did crease. But like I said, I can't tell if it creased because of the concealer or because of the powder. So I'll definitely try the concealer again with some different powders. And I'll update you guys in another get ready with me about how I like that one. Because I do love how full coverage it is. And I think that's it. So let's jump back to past Monica. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked it. You'll give it a thumbs up and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.